Welcome to another Bible study. We're going through Matthew 5, 6, and 7, what we call the Sermon on the Mount. And today we're talking about Beatitude number 6, where Jesus talks about, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Uh, blessed are the pure in heart. Pure in heart. Very, very uh, important. Um, Jesus said, in order to see God, we're going to have to have a pure heart. I believe he's talking about two different things here. Uh, going to heaven, of course. We're not going to go to heaven unless our heart is made pure. And the only way that can be made pure is through the blood of Jesus Christ. But blessed are the pure in hearts, for they're going to see God. And I think that means a day-to-day -day walk with God. Of course, having a pure heart means that we're going to see more of God. Having an impure heart uh, means that we're not going to see as much of God. And so it's very, very important that we strive to have a pure heart. And of course, this world is plotting against us. We have these three enemies. We have the world. We have Satan. We have our own selves, our own flesh. And these things are constantly trying to dirty us, make our hearts impure, and so it's a constant battle to keep a pure heart, to stay in communion uh, with God. The good, good news is when we fail, you know what? We can get cleaned up. I love what First John says. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from what? From all unrighteousness. And, and so what is having a pure heart? It's about having the right motives. It's about having the right motivation. It's about having unmixed motives, having pure motives. And God wants us to have uh, pure motives. Of course, a lot of times people do different things for different reasons. Uh, I don't want to get too much ahead of the, uh, myself here in this sermon, but in chapter number six, Jesus gives us a few things. He talks about praying he talks about fasting. He talks about giving. And he talks about how when you pray, when you fast, when you give, you you do it privately. Um, because guess what? God will see you in private or in secret and he will reward you how? Openly. And so we'll talk about that at a later time. But this is what we're talking about. We're talking about having uh, the right motives. And I think if we're being honest with ourselves, we would, we would say that, boy, we've done a lot of things in our lives with impure motives, with, without a pure heart. And uh, let me remind us all that when we do things with the wrong motives, when we do things with the wrong heart, God knows about it. I think about Barnabas, how he brought that gift to the first century church and he laid it at the apostles feet and and of course the name Barnabas means son of consolation and and uh, boy the accolades that Barnabas received and he had a pure heart in bringing that gift uh, to God uh, and then we had Ananias and Zephyra they thought they would do something similar but they had impure motives they had mixed motives and what happened, of course, we know ultimately God slayed both of them because they said they gave all the money. They didn't give all the money. It's a long story there, but God knows man looks on the outward. But here we see in the scripture, God looks upon the hearts. How many times did Jesus question the motives of the Pharisees? Of course, their motives were not pure at all. And we're going to look at some scriptures about that just to remind us about that. So here's the thing. What are our motives for the things that we do? Do we have a, a pure heart? Um, do we go to church with the right motives? Do we read the scriptures with the right motives? Do we witness with the right motives? Do we give money to the Lord's work? with the right motives. And I could go on and on and on. And of course, this carries over into our, our secular lives as well as doing things with the right motives. So we need to consider our heart. And of course, the heart is deceitful. Jeremiah tells us the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. 
who can know it? And so in Proverbs chapter four warns us in Proverbs 4.23, I think it is, uh, keep your heart or guard your heart uh, with all diligence for out of it, out of your heart are all the issues of life. And so what is our emphasis? Our emphasis should be on the inside, what's in our heart. You know, sometimes we say about a person, that person has what? A good heart. And uh, that means they have good motives, that they uh, care deeply and, and, and so on and so forth. And so we need to consider our hearts. We need to draw a little circle around us uh, during this Bible study and say, hey, what is the condition of my heart? Because Jesus said, happy are those, right, that have a pure heart. They're going to see God. And so we want to make sure that we have that that clear, uh, clean a heart, and that's what is important to God. Uh, if you'll remember with me the story of when David was anointed to be king over Israel, he wasn't there. And of course, uh, uh, Samuel came to town and, and all the brothers were lined up, all the sons of Jesse, and, and boy, Samuel was like, surely this one's it. Uh, he's tall, tall, dark, and handsome, and so on and so forth. And of course, Samuel said no. Well, even Samuel said that surely this is this is him uh, because uh, look at look at his outward appearance. And God kept saying no, 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 no. And then, of course, Samuel said, "Are these all your children? I, I don't get this." And and of course, Jesse said, "I have one more." And and of course, they went and fetched David. And and God said, "That is the one right there." And of course, that famous scripture that we use so many times in good ways and bad ways, uh, mostly good ways, I believe. Man looks on the outward appearance. Can you finish it? But God looks on the heart. You know, we as human beings are impressed with the outward, and I don't want to get off on a rabbit trail here. This pops into my head about the book of James where God warns us, uh, don't be respecters of people as far as their fancy apparel and their fancy uh, jewelry. And you say to those that have those things, hey, come up and, and sit here. But the, the poor and lowly, you say, hey, hey, sit over there, sit at my feet, you know. And God says, hey, are we not become respecters of persons? And so, again, we have a problem many times looking on the outward, but God looks on the heart. You know, Jesus focused on the heart. You know, there was a group of Pharisees, religious people, and they tried to look good on the outward, but they were wicked and terrible and nasty on the, on the heart and the inside. Let's look at it. Matthew chapter 23, verse 27. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside are full of dead man's bones and all uncleanness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Wow. Jesus said in Matthew 15, verse 8, about the religious he said, these people draw nigh to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. Listen to this, but their heart is far uh, from me. Jesus knows when we are only doing lip service. Jesus knows what we are on the inside. And, you know, Jesus got very, very frustrated with this religious group that they appeared. And, boy, they really worked at that to appear uh, just like great people and Jesus saw their hearts and uh, he knew what they really were and he told them what they really were and eventually that same group of people had Jesus uh, killed. Jesus warns us, Matthew chapter 15, later in the chapter, verse number 19, for out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies, these are all things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashing hands does not defile a man. And of course, again, Jesus was dealing with these Pharisees, 
Uh, they were being critical of him because they were eating without washing their hands. And Jesus, once again, went back to their to their hearts. And so, again, our heart is deceitful. It's wicked. And, of course, we need to keep our heart. We need to guard our hearts. The Bible says this also in Proverbs, as a man thinketh in his what? Heart. So is he. And so Jesus is teaching us a couple things here. We're going to uh, peek at. Um, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Listen to this. Purity of heart isn't believing the right things, isn't going through the right motions. Listen to this. It's doing the right things with the right motives, with the right heart. So you know what? We don't just need to be uh, hearers only. We need to be doers. And that's what the motive of the heart. If we have the right motives, we're going to do the right thing. And so why? Because it's coming from the right place. It's coming from the heart. It comes from the inside out. And that's what Christianity should be. That's what biblical Christianity should be. That's what Jesus taught. It comes from the inside out. And again, the Pharisees, the religion of the day was only focused on the outside. And you know what? The outside's not going to work its way in. Uh, it's only the inside that will work its way uh, out. And so it's not a, a matter of just believing the right things, thinking the right things, although those things are important, don't get me wrong, but it's more important of doing the right thing with the right motives. Do it to glorify God, not for the praise of man. Again, Matthew chapter 6, we're going to talk about this in the future. Jesus kept saying three different times, they had their reward to be seen of men. Uh, they pray to be seen of men, so that's their reward. Uh, they fast to be seen of men, so that's their reward. They um, they give to be seen of men. They fast, pray, these things to be seen of men. Well, they have their reward. They have the reward. And boy, God knows what our motives are. If we're doing it to be seen of men, if we are doing it uh, to please God. So, of course, we don't want to be hypocrites. And we all have some hypocrite inside of us, believe me. But, you know, we don't want to uh, praise God on Sunday and then uh, curse all week. We don't want to talk about being honest uh, with people and then be dishonest at the grocery store. And uh, I was behind somebody, just a side note here. And uh, boy, they were they were uh, uh, stealing, uh, just scanning like every third item these self serve. And a worker was over there watching them. I don't know whatever happened uh, with it, uh, but but we shouldn't be in that group where we praise God on Sunday, then we rob uh, the grocery store uh, on Monday, or, or we serve God with our our mouth. But guess what? Our our hearts are far from God. And so, again, purity of heart isn't believing the right things. It isn't going through the right motion. It's doing the right thing with the right motives, with the right heart. Hey, listen to this. It's asking yourself before you do something, what will God think of this? Is there consistency with what I say and what I do? And that's what the world's looking for. The world is looking for us to be consistent. God needs some consistent Christians uh, that will what? That will say what they believe and live what they believe. So purity of heart is doing the right thing with the right motives, with the right heart. Here's another thought. Purity of heart isn't only the absence of corruption. Now think about that. We think about a pure heart. We obviously are going to think about the absence of of corruption, the absence of doing wicked things, and that's part of it. But that's not the whole the whole story. Purity of heart isn't only the absence of corruption in your life; it's also the fullness of God's spirit in you. God warned. Jesus gave a parable. Uh, he gave a warning that if we just clean out the inside, but we do not replace it with something. Guess what? 
there's going to be more devils come in. And the state of that man Jesus taught in that parable was worse later than it was worse at the beginning. So it's not about just sweeping and, 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 uh, clearing out and garnishing and making it look good. No, it's replacing it with good things and replacing that, uh, corruption, replacing that, those bad things with good things with the spirit of God. I want to read it to you again. Purity of heart isn't only the absence of corruption in your life. It's also the fullness of God's spirit in you. And you know what? The fullness of the spirit being filled with the spirit. If we're not filled with the spirit, so with the spirit, and if we do not do things uh, through the spirit, then we just become uh, uh, a religious do-gooder. We become what 1 Corinthians 13 talks about, a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. But you know what? Those deeds of charity is what is important. And, and what a powerful chapter uh, 1 Corinthians 13 is. And that's what it's talking about there. Uh, look at this here. Listen to this here. Purity of heart isn't just the absence of certain things in your life. It's the very presence of God in you. Hey, you know what? I used to listen to a song over and over again. I sang by a, a singing singing family. I forget their name. But uh, when the world looks at you, did they see Jesus? When the world looks at you, uh, did they see him? Uh, did they see love? You know, this song goes on and on. Did they see these attributes of Christ uh, in us? And so if we have a pure heart, guess what? They're going to see those attributes of Christ uh, in us and our lives. But here's the thing, like anything... We have to be honest. We have to be honest. Do I have a pure heart? You know, we talk about getting help. You know, the people that are addicted, uh, you know, we, we read it. We've seen it. You, I'm sure you've seen it in movies and TV shows. Hello, I'm somebody. I'm so-and-so and I'm an alcoholic or I'm so-and-so and I'm uh, an addict. And boy, those are hard things to, to, to mouth. Those are hard things to say. That you know what, if we're going to fix the problem, we have to be honest. And it doesn't matter what vice it is, what problem it is that you and I deal with. We have to get to the place where we're being honest. We're not going to be saved until we're first honest. When we say, hey, I'm a sinner. Hey, I, I deserve to go to hell. I'm on my way to hell. And you know what? Christ died for me. He paid the penalty for my sins on the cross. He is the propitiation for our sins, that's a big word, but it's a substitute. And that's what Jesus is. He paid the ransom. And what do we need to do? We need to ask. We need to humble ourselves. And we need to cry out like that sinner. Be merciful to me, uh, sinner. And I'm going to look at this story right here in Luke chapter 18. It's a powerful story that Jesus told to illustrate this. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. Could you imagine actually praying that way? But Jesus gave this parable here. Now, I'm thankful that I'm not like all these nasty people, and, and I'm especially thankful that I'm not like this guy right here. Can you imagine that? And then he gives a list. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector standing afar off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Listen to what Jesus said. He said, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified or pure in heart. This man went down to his house justified or pure in heart rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. You remember what Peter says, um, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. What's the difference between these two fellows? One was a phony baloney, <laughs> right? And the other one was sincere. He had a pure heart. He was not trying to be deceptive. He wasn't trying to pull the wool over God's eyes. He wasn't trying to be self-righteous. On the contrary, he wouldn't even 
uh, look up to God and he, he stood over here and, and he was embarrassed. He was ashamed. He was humble. And all he could do is just beat his chest. He didn't pray a fancy prayer. He just prayed one of the best prayers a person that will ever pray. Be merciful to me, a sinner. And the Bible says he went home justified. He went home with a pure heart and a pure uh, conscience. And you know, it's important, most important to God, what's on the inside. Who you are is a person. What is on the inside? What is in the heart? And again, as God told Samuel, Samuel, don't be like everybody else. Hey, don't just look on the outward. That's what man does. Man looks on the outward, but God looks on the heart. Hey, you know what? God didn't save us to make us look like a, uh, a good looking religious church going, uh, person. You know, just to, to, uh, to check off all the boxes on the outside. You know, no. He called us to have a pure heart. And Paul talked about and taught about having a pure conscience. And boy, we could talk a, a lot about that. But on the inside, Jesus said only the pure in heart will see God. Again, I think that's a two-part thing. Only the pure in heart are going to go to heaven, right? And we can't do that on our own. Only Jesus, right, uh, can take that black heart and make it right with God. You know, we use that wordless book. I haven't used it in a long time. Uh, talking to children, and boy, we show them uh, those wordless books, those colors. And I can think about that color black. You know, this is a condition of your heart, you know. But then you show them that that red, the blood of Jesus Christ. Man, he died for us. He can wash away all that that nastiness of our heart. And then we show them that white piece of paper. This is what that red blood will do. It'll take that black heart and it'll wash it and, and it'll make it white as snow. And that's what Isaiah 1's talking about. Uh, about our, 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 our sin being made white as snow and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanses us from all sin. And you know, the only way we'll get to heaven, blessed are the pure in heart. They're going to see God. And you know what? Do you want to see God every day? Boy, I do. I want God to be a part of my life. And I want to see God daily, not just when I die. Well, guess what? If I want to see God daily in my everyday life, I'm going to need to have a pure heart. Hey, what is the condition of your heart? Number one, are you saved? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? If you don't, reach out to me. I'd love to speak with you about it. Uh, pastor at lbcleheighton.org. Pastor at l bcleighton.org or my personal um, email, Pastor Wolverton at Gmail. And I'd love to talk to you about your salvation if you're unsure uh, of it. And so, hey, what's the condition of your heart? Number one, are you saved? And number two, Christian, you're saved. You've been born again. Uh, how's your daily walk with the Lord? Are you seeing the Lord every day? Well, if you're not, there's a heart problem there. And we need to clean up that heart. And uh, so, so important. I hope this was a help to you. Uh, don't forget, tomorrow night we have Zoom. A lot of things to pray for at 7 o'clock. And God willing, I'll see you Sunday at Lighthouse. God bless.